Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, I'm going to talk about electromagnets. So if you remember the last episode where I talked about motors, I mentioned that motors use the Lorentz force principle to turn a electrical energy into a mechanical energy. And that is done using electromagnets. So for this episode, I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper into electromagnets. I'll talk about how they work and how you can make a couple of simple versions of your own at home. So first of all, one of the really cool things about electromagnets is that it works in both ways. Meaning if you have a moving magnetic field, you can also generate an electric field. So that means you can take a motor, like the ones that we were looking at last week, and if you turn a propeller, you'll actually get a current out the other end. So if you attach this to a multimeter, you can measure the voltage and the output of the current generated from you spinning the propeller. So it helps to know the direction of the magnetic field lines when we're trying to make an electromagnet since that'll tell us you know, how to best design our electromagnet. So you can use a variation on the right hand rule and how you do that is you point your thumb in the direction that the current is flowing. So if I have a straight wire going this way carrying current in this direction then I curl my fingers and the direction that your fingers curl naturally is the orientation of the magnetic field lines. So in the case of a straight wire carrying a current in this direction, you get the magnetic field lines in circles parallel uh, to each other running all the way down the wire. So um, we can use that to help us figure out how to design an electromagnet. So for example, if you have a circle with current running through it, you can trace the path with your thumb and what you'll notice is that, oh, all the magnetic field lines as they go around the circle, well, it gets kind of an awkward angle, but they sum in the middle. So that means if you have a spiral carrying a current, the magnetic field lines will actually sum in the middle of that spiral. So as the current goes around, most of the magnetic field lines add in the middle. And so you end up with a fairly strong magnetic field within that coil of wire. All right, so that was a quick overview of the Lorentz force. Now I get to show you how to make your very own electromagnet at home. So you'll need a paramagnetic material, or basically a material that's non-magnetic but can be magnetized. So any objects that magnets pick up permanent magnets pick up naturally. So a uh, really easy uh, thing to use is a nail, since you probably have one at home. You'll also need some insulated wire. I recommend solid gauge for this, just because it might be a little easier to work with. You'll need a nine volt battery, and also probably some alligator clips, my messy pile of alligator clips to attach the battery to your electromagnet. So I won't bore you with the details of wrapping the nail, but basically you just want to wrap the nail from the top to the bottom with the insulated wire. That's the basic design. Now I connect a battery. So to demonstrate, right now it's not magnetic, not doing anything. But once I connect a battery, it'll be magnetized. See, there you go. And if I unclip it, it falls. <laughs> super quick, super easy, and there you go. So that's the first version of the electromagnet. There's also another type of electromagnet called a solenoid. Solenoids are used for lots of different applications. One common application you might be familiar with is in irrigation valves. So like this one, for example. So this is a DC solenoid irrigation valve, and I will quickly show you how it works so you have a general understanding. Basically, it takes the same principle as this, but it uses a hollow inside to attract and repel a paramagnetic object into and out of the um, center of the coil. So let's connect this to my 9 volt and see what happens. Oh, nothing. Okay, so that means I probably have to switch the direction of the leads, which will cause the direction of the, the magnetic field to reverse. Yeah. 
So there you go. So I can also cause the uh, the material on the inside to be attracted if I reverse the direction of the current flowing. So let's uh, make a simple version of a solenoid. So all you'll need for that is a straw, more wire, and a nine volt that's fully charged. So this will require a little bit more current, a uh, little bit more power overall. And you'll also need a paramagnetic material like the nail before, and you just want to make sure that it can fit inside the straw. So again, won't bore you with the details of wrapping the straw in a bunch of wire, um, but basically you just want to uh, make it as evenly spaced as possible. So now I will put the nail partially into the straw. All right, well, nothing. So I think my nine volt is a little low on juice. So I'm gonna demonstrate this solenoid with a bit of a bigger battery. All right, here we go. Whoop. No, nothing, okay. Let's switch the leads. Woo! All right, so... <laughs> that works a little too well, I think. So, too big of a battery. <laughs> so, I'll leave you with a question to kind of get your uh, brain juices flowing. How can you take this basic setup and make a stronger magnetic field with just this basic setup? So I'll leave it there for now. Uh, check the episode that I put up next for an answer to that question. And to answer last week's question, I asked why the uh, magnet on the motor spins when you put the current through the side of the magnet but not through the bottom of the magnet. So if you're familiar with the right hand rule, you'll probably have guessed why that is. And if you're not, it's because the current, when you put it through the side of the magnet, is perpendicular to the magnetic field lines, which causes a ma induced magnetic field that is in turn perpendicular to that. So then you get a force of rotation. Let me know if you need a little bit more clarification or if you have any more questions. So. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.